That was bad. <laughs> Across the state line on the Piedmont Plateau, Josh is finishing the roof of his underground still site with the help of Cuz and Moonshine Apprentice Colt. Right now, we're putting two by fours on the face of this. That's going to enable us to plant some grass. Once the roots take a hold, it's going to stay on here forever. You want to be able to tell this is here. It's going to be cool, ain't it? Yes, sir. it's going to be awesome. This steel site is not like any other steel site. It's not like we went down here to the hardware store and I bought a set of plants. Like that right there. That's all you gotta do, and then we flat grass on it. This come out of my brain, so I wanted to make this damn highest quality that I possibly can. Man, this is gonna be great. When we get all the stuff growing in here, you won't be able to tell it's here. We'll be able to brush it in. I'm excited to be able to make some moonshine down here. Let's grab a steel. Now that we got the roof on, it's time to get the steel in, put it all together, and make it fit. I got a 275-gallon copper pot out here. I'm building a furnace with this steel, and it's going to have a chimney coming up in it. Because we're working in a hole, it's very important to catch all that hot air and pull it out of my room. In Josh's underground bunker, a 250-gallon steel will be set inside a large steel furnace. Smoke and fumes generated by the furnace will flow through a vent pipe into a large aluminum manifold on the ceiling. The aluminum manifold, or hood, will safely carry the fumes and smoke to the surface, where they will exit through a camouflaged chimney, leaving the air in the bunker clean and smoke-free. Yeah, we got to hot this. You... That cap's going to be at least 14 inches tall or so. It's going to have a chimney coming up in it. There ain't no way that's going to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to either dig down or a freaking little different steel. I guess we'll just dig down because it'd be a lot easier to dig down and make another steel. That's true. I'm not like everybody else. I do things different. When I build things, I usually build things without a plan because I don't know, I'm a visual learner. I do things on site. Cuz, why don't you dig in a rock pile? Well, this whole thing's a rock pile. That's the problem. I could go to a smaller pot, but I'm ready to hit the ground running, and I got a steel, I'm ready to use it. It's gonna make it work. We're digging our way to China, as you can see. It'd be all right with me if I never, ever, ever, ever dug anything ever again, as long as I live. I'm tired of digging my way in and out of holes. Where'd my help go? <laughs> Whoa. That's a pretty far fall if you slip up, ain't it? In the backwoods of Polk County, Josh, Cuz, and Colt are constructing a ventilation system to keep smoke, soot, and heat from entering the bunker. So this is like for ventilation, right? Yep. Yeah. I got to build a vent system it's attached to my chimney. So this is probably the first time you ever had to make a hood like this. I've never made a hood in my life. It's going to suck all my gases, all my heat, all my stuff out of my site so it's not a toxic steel site. If I don't have good airflow in this bunker, then we're going to probably die from carbon monoxide poisoning. Just caulk the hell out of it. I never thought making a site be this complicated. Lay it thick and leave a bead. There's an art in a science system. I feel like I'm learning it, you know, as I go. Well, what we're going to do right now, we're going to flip it over just like the metal side down. Yeah. It's going to hold up, and we're going to run a screw into plywood. All right. Our steel site's almost complete, man. It's been a lot of work. Right there, right there, cuz. It's just this headache after that headache. It's just one thing after another. But now that I'm getting our vent in, we can put our pot in, make some mash, make some moonshine. Try not to down put your arms all over the pole, because that creosote will burn the piss out of it. What do you mean? Give you like a rash. Burn my arms all up, my eyes. To build the roof of his bunker, Josh used more than a dozen telephone poles that came coated with a preservative called creosote. It ain't real bad, is it? What do you mean? I mean, hell, Josh, if it's bad to touch, wouldn't it be bad to breathe? Now, I've noticed, like, the sore throat. Once he said something about touching it, it kind of just all clicked in my head. We probably shouldn't be breathing it. Well, I mean, you ain't breathing it. How you figure? You don't smell it in the air? Well, I mean, if you're burning it or something, we ain't burning it. 
I've been around telephone poles and cross ties all my life. I knew he was going to smell it a little bit. Not a big deal. What, you smell it there? So what? You ever been around railroad trestles? What do they smell like? It's just a smell. I'm really, like, just trying to explain to him that it's more about extreme cases where you're going to get sick. Josh. Ah. Come here. So that creosote stuff you're talking about not touching, it says you can't breathe it either in an enclosed place We're like this. We're not Yeah, but it's, it's look. enclosed. Look right here. Just look. I got it right here. It says creosote is a mixture of several chemicals. Creosote, creosote is also toxic. Creosote is also toxic. In Polk County, North Carolina, installing their ventilation system, Josh makes an unsettling discovery. The telephone poles he used to build this site were treated with creosote, a chemical hazardous to humans. Once he said something about touching it, it kind of just all clicked in my head. We probably shouldn't be breathing it. Creosote is a mixture of several chemicals that can be very dangerous. That's what I'm saying. Right, well, gasoline is very toxic and dangerous too, right? And we handle it all well, the time. Well, I'm not going to go up there and snip it. Well, I used to. It's like driving a nail on a steel pole, trying to get him to think about what's really important here. In the 1800s, creosote was first derived from the wood of beech trees. With a smoky flavor, creosote was used as a food preservative and by Prohibition era moonshiners to mimic Scotch's smoky flavor. But made from coal tar, creosote is an industrial grade wood preservative used to prevent rot on railroad ties, harbor pilings, and telephone poles. One of the more common of wood preservatives is creosote, which contain chemicals like, what is that? I mean, so, I can't the, pronounce. the point is, blah, blah, you blah, can't blah, breathe blah, it. Whatever. That's the point. Poly, polycritic, aromatic hydrocarbons that can volatize into the air. Into your lungs, into I your throat. I believe that's what you're, what you're talking about. That is what I'm talking about. I would. I mean, think about it this way. You're going to put your mash barrels in here with that you can breathe toxic, and you can put your mash barrels in here. It's a toxic. You're breathing it right now. Just think about it. From what I've gathered from reading, this is true. If you can't smell it, you are breathing toxins. So if you are breathing toxins, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me to build a steel site that's toxic, does it? So what we're going to do now? I don't know. I don't know what to do right now. With nobody's complaining about creosote in there. My guys don't want to work in it. I don't want to work in it either. And if it's really a toxin in the air, I don't want my mash in it. So now I don't know exactly how to fix it, but we're going to. <laughs> 